Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be talking to some of the amazing women from Single Drunk Female. We are joined today by Simone Finch, who is the writer, creator, and executive producer of this the show, Daisy Gardner, who's the writer, executive producer, and co-showrunner, along with cast members Sophia Black Delia and Ali Sheedy. And Simone and Daisy, I wanted to start by um, talking a little bit about your collaborative relationship with one another. Um, it sounds like, Daisy, you were kind of the main person in the writer's room and, and really kind of managing that space while Simone would be on set during production, which is such a great way to really be able to have eyes and ears in every single space and, and really maximize what you're doing and the details that you're collaborating with the rest of the team on. Um, so it's just really interested in, in how that dynamic came together and, and how that really worked and, and really prospered with production with the two of you being in those spaces and working together so closely. Sure, I mean, I think first of all, um, Simone has a fantastic voice and a fantastic lens and a great POV that that gave birth to this show. Um, so because of that, uh, I think writers were really able to tap into so many fun things that were established in the pilot and that were also created in the characters um, of Samantha and Carol. Uh, I would say Sophia and Ali did so much background work and so much deep, deep work on those characters and had discussions with writers to kind of bring them to life, even to the point where like, I feel like at a certain point, Carol's boyfriend is moving in and um, Ali was like, she would never let him put fishing gear in. Like, I am just, I read this and I had a reaction. <laughs> because she's going to let him put fishing gear in. And I was like, no, you're right. And we should go back and change that. Absolutely. We hear you. Um, so I would say collaboration came from all areas. And I also want to shout out Jenny, who, who found this project. And um, originally Phil Trail, our awesome EP, had brought it to Freeform with Simone. And Jenny was the one who saw possibility and said, okay, you guys, this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to launch it. And I swear it will look cool and be cool. And so it, it basically became like a village of people who all brought their own unique talents to it and helped shape a first year show. I don't, I don't think a show survives or gets off the ground unless you have everybody all hands on deck at all time, bringing their experiences, like someone bringing her past life experiences into it and kind of opening up a vein so that we could create stories out of that um, and the work that was done by our actors on set. Yeah, I think um, opening up a vein is a good way to put it. Um, <clears throat> you know, I would just tell stories about my drunken antics and they would make it into the show. So that was pretty easy. And, um, you know, I think the way that I saw set with the actors was just trying to you know, not everyone on set um, is an alcoholic. That's a good thing. Uh, and I think I had that to share with them. And I think it was helpful because, especially in drunk scenes or, you know, even in certain sobriety scenes, like the amends that happened this last week, that was an amends I made my mother. And then she turned it around on me. And so I think that um, just being there and being supportive of their choices. And again, this isn't everything life like, right? There are certain things that change because it's better. Um, but I was just there to support and to help in whatever way I could. So. Yeah. And, and Sophia, I was really interested in how you approached a lot of facets of your performance in the show, because there's moments where we see your character sober and, and the drunkenness is kind of in different scopes. There's a difference to when we see her drinking at her job. And that's very much about functioning throughout the day to kind of like being out at a bar with friends. And that's a different dynamic. And those are very different things that it requires from you as an actor and to find in your performance. And so how did you approach really figuring out the different balances of that? Um, yeah, that's a really great question. So thank you for that. Um, it was hard. It's, you know, there's, there's so many different types of drugs and there's so many different it, it, within one person, even like you said, you know, depending on your circumstance, where you are, where she is in her alcoholism, where she is in her sobriety, all of those things really affect, I think how much she's drinking, what she's drinking. Simone and I would have a lot of conversations about like, what are the first three drinks at the bar? <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, so it was a, it was a kind of constant conversation. And I had an amazing acting coach on set, Sarah Morell, who helped me a lot in sort of just keeping track 
of those different levels and what made sense where. Um, it was really important to me that it seemed realistic, but also funny and also not cute, you know, cause this is an alcoholic. I think often when we see, especially women drunk in TV or film, it's sort of adorable um, or very funny and very broad. And not that I have anything against either of those things, um, but I just really wanted this show and this character to be, to be more representative of, of a sort of truthful uh, drunkenness that someone who takes it too far might experience. Um, yeah. So it's a really complicated way of saying it was hard and I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's an impressive outcome. And, and Ali, yeah. <laughs> off the back of that, Ali, you know, one of the things is like, this is such a, a beautifully complex mother-daughter relationship, which really allows all the different facets of their dynamic to, to come together. And one of the things that I really love about your character is some of the ways that she expresses her love without necessarily knowing and having the right words in the moment. Like, oh, I'm gonna like make this elaborate roast chicken and that's gonna say everything you know, better than I ever could, or I want to read the piece that you said you're writing. I promise not to judge it is also like her way of saying, I love you. And so how for you, did you kind of view all those things that she can't say out loud, but is expressing in different ways as a character? Um, underneath the rock bottom foundation was obviously, is obviously the love for my daughter, which I find extremely easy to do with Sophia, as Sophia knows. Um, so easy, <laughs> so effortless. Um, the rest of it is a whole bunch of history um, and some problems I have with her, right? So I don't like the alcoholism thing at all. For me, Allie playing Carol, I feel like it's some sort of um, excuse, you know, for her to wreck her life. I don't want it to reflect on me. You know, where did it come from? What is it? I don't know anything about it. Um, and, and I, yes, I believe that Sam should be writing for newspapers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe, like she should be doing that. Do you know, and I am really proud of what she was doing in New York. Um, but I, I do believe in her. Um, and I do think that she, uh, had everything going for her and she just blew it up and not forgivable, right? For most of the show, not forgivable. Um, and then the other thing is we do have a history. Sophia and I have not particularly, you know, with Simone with the Simone's history gone through all of this in the show, but there was a whole history that happened when my husband was sick and she didn't show up, you know? or she showed up and it was a disaster, or she didn't come to Thanksgiving, or all of those kinds of things. We don't get into it in the first season at all, but it's underneath. Mm -hmm. And when I was working with Sophia in the scenes, I always felt like there's this like simmering history, you know, that we could feel with each other that doesn't get directly addressed, but it kind of fills in blanks for the dynamic. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, and, and there was mentioned before of kind of like the tone and the voice of the show. And I think it's such a, a special thing and such a difficult thing to find, especially when, you know, these are the themes and topics that you're exploring. There's comedic elements, but the comedy is always so respectful. There's moments that can be humorous when Samantha's drunk or related to her journey into sobriety, but it's never making fun at the journey of sobriety. And so there's a real respectfulness in that. And I was interested in how you all really figured out what that comedic dynamic was going to be, you know, how far do we want to carry it? How much do we want it to veer into the side of drama and finding that really sweet spot in the middle that the show does so well? We have always followed, like we take sobriety seriously, like as I, it's not as our religion, but like as our philosophy, we, there is a belief in recovery and sobriety, but Simone would share so many things from her life that were so funny that we were like, okay, it's all the things surrounding it. And it's the people you meet and it's the rules that you have to follow. And it's the, well, the rules are good and they're there to keep you sober, but it's frustrating. And a person's relationship with them is interesting. Um, and so we loved all the world and the texture and the things, but 
recovery itself, I think we wanted to honor. What, what do you think, Simone? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I mean, for example, when she's dancing on the bar in the pilot, I was, I danced to Shakira in an empty bar on six shots of vodka by myself. <laughs> and I thought that was really sexy at the time. <laughs> and, and no man would touch me after that and I was like what you know so so me being drunk in that moment isn't funny but my reaction to yes. why is no man touching me is funny so again we're never laughing at her alcoholism or laughing at Sam's selfishness her horniness her you know how dare she think that she'll get men da- when they put the money at her in the pilot I'm always like oh god like what was I you know, so that's what's funny, I think. And also sobriety, you know, they say there's a saying, wear your sobriety like a loose garment. And that's how I saw the show is that we can laugh at it because I think it's really important to laugh at sobriety um, as a sober person for almost eight years, because if I take myself too seriously, that's when I'm going to go drink, honestly. Mm. Um, that's when I'm going to like, you know, but when I'm like, all right, Simone, like, it's really not as serious as you think it is. Let's talk about it. That's when I stay sober. So I know that was kind of preachy, but I apologize. It didn't sound preachy, I don't think. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's sort of the backbone of the show was we all the one thing every single person who came to the table on this agreed on was that this was not a, the sobriety was not the joke. That was sort of, you know, rule number one of Fight Club. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um and then from there, it is it was quite tricky, at least in my experience as a performer finding the moments of levity and finding the moments of humor, especially in the back half of the season when things started to feel at least for me quite heavy and not even necessarily dark, but like Simone said, almost sort of self-serious in a way. And I was constantly sort of pushing for us to find those moments of funny because first of all, it's really fun to do as an actress. I love comedy. I love trying to make people laugh, but also I think it's the best way to connect to people and communicate to an audience. And I think, um, especially my friends that are sober and my friends within this community that have connected to the show, they are so grateful that there are moments of levity, that there are, you know, these characters, especially in our amazing supporting cast that are, can be bigger and funnier and, um, and kind of fill in those different shades of the world. Because I think, again, these stories are so often very serious and the subject matter obviously is and we have so much respect for that but um there's also so much humor and so much joy and hope in recovery you know I when when I sort of was trying to explain the show to my friends and family while I was shooting it I was like I was doing such a bad job of explaining it because they were like how could that be a comedy how could that be a half hour comedy and I just kept saying think of it like this like the hour-long drama version of this show was five years ago in Sam's life you know, that was when it was really fucking fucked up and sad and uh, the kind of world that we don't want to live in. But where she is now is really fun, I think. And, you know, people like Ian and Maddie, who plays um, Rebecca's wife on the show, and Jojo Brown and Madison Shepard, we have these like amazing, amazing supporting cast members who come in and just bring the funny. They just do. Um, so that was really helpful too. But it, in, in my experience of Uh, in my career, this has been the most challenging tone by far uh, to sort of hit week after week. And I, uh, same. And I also think like, just even in 102, as we were doing the first episode after the pilot, like we'd find so many funny things. Um, The opener kind of shows like the high school cafeteria nature of, of, sobriety and recovery, like of a meeting where you're, you're walking in and there's the business casual dads and there's, um, the super hot LGBTQ community and everything like that. And originally Simone, I think we went on for like 10 pages. (laughs) Like we could have just, just the people in AA. Yeah, you could. Just the people in AA, like, and the wine moms and all the different clicks. You gotta have wine moms. Yeah. And it was just like joke after joke. And then we were like, oh, we seriously need like 30 seconds of this. Yeah. Um, but there's there's so much interesting texture and fun around it that we wanted to examine it. Yeah. yeah. Ali, I also wanted to talk a little bit in terms of Carol 
about the relationship that she has with herself, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying earlier about she was really proud of everything that Sam was doing before. She hasn't, you know, she has her book club over. She hasn't been able to tell them because she's concerned about the judgment of others. And there's a couple of things that she says that kind of reveal insecurities, like the money that she has to use to repair the car after the crash at the beginning, where she's like, I was going to use that for a neck lift. And, you know, when Bob's asking her, what can I do to make you feel more comfortable? And she's like, can you make me 30 years younger? And so we get these little inklings into the relationship and the way that she really values the way other people perceive her quite a lot. And so how did you view that relationship that she has with herself? Um, she's, I'm, hi, Carol, trying to figure out yeah. what is my life now? You know, I was married for such a long time to one person that I loved so much and took care of him through his sickness. And it's been two years, two and a half years, right, Simone? By the end of the season, I think it's been, yes, yes. Since he passed on. So, you know, two years, two and a half years, not a very long time to just suddenly be trying to reimagine your entire life. And now I have to reimagine my entire relationship with Sam, right? Because she shows back up. So got to address it, got to deal with it. She's back in the house. Our relationship went right off the deep end. We don't even know how to have a conversation. Um, so that relationship with her actually is the defining thing happening for me. And yet as Carol, I'm fighting against that um, feeling like, no, no, you know, it's not going to be about her. It's not going to be about him anymore. It's not going to be about me, 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 me. And yet um, it is about her, you know? So there's a, there's a constant tension going on. I'm going to say I, Ali as Carol, constant tension going on within myself all the time, no matter what, character I'm in a scene with it, there's a, just a friction uh not I am not as Carol comfortable within my own skin because I have no idea how I'm going to live the rest of my life I'm still trying to figure all of that out and everybody crosses my line do you know what I mean everybody goes into my territory and makes me feel like <laughs> a little <laughs> Um, that happens over and over again. That's not necessarily written in the script, but Simone, you know, that's the prickly part of Carol, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let, let's just say uh, you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Okay. One of the other things that I wanted to ask you about a little bit, Simone, is, um, you know, obviously this is a show that you're, you know, you're, as you were talking about before, brings a lot of your own personal experiences and stories into it. Um, but I thought it was really wonderful that you also still brought on a sobriety consultant to work with you on the show. Um, you know, and I was interested in what a lot of the details were that you have kind of like seen represented in film and TV, you know, to Sophia's point, there's been a lot of like dark dramas around this. So there's certain things within steps, making amends, like not getting into intimate relationships for the first year that audiences have a little bit familiar of familiarity with, even if they haven't been through that journey or known someone themselves. But then the show also really, you know, in having so many episodes and having a whole season to explore this has the opportunity to go a lot deeper with a lot of elements, you know, like what does that mean for her mom? There's really not a roadmap for her. And what are the details that really influence her journey as well um, and so what were the things in that regard that people don't often see represented that you were really excited to bring into the show and what were some of the things that the sobriety consultant helped bring in narratively as well I think um, one of the things that people don't realize about early sobriety is that it's in your body I had multiple people tell me that episode two and three like when she's at the bar as well and she's feeling the bar and she's feeling like being around drunk people when you're sober is really gross. I can't describe it to you, it's disgusting. Um, they're also annoying to boot. Anyways, um, so I think that like in the body stuff was new to a lot of friends of mine were like, wow, I had no idea that, you know, cause you're getting off a, a drug, right? You're getting off a major drug and it really is, it takes time. It took, it took me a month to get off, that was me. Um, but some people are quicker, some people it takes longer. Um, the other part, I think that the, the thing that the, it was actually an alcoholism consultant, it wasn't a sobriety consultant, but um, oh, sorry. we actually had some fights, but, but like, but like real, like, like, well, this isn't done. And I'm like, well, as someone who's an alcoholic, you know, one of those was that, um, for example, newcomers um, can sleep with each other. I mean, if they want to, I don't know why you would want to do that. 
but that it's the, the rule is basically for a newcomer and someone with time. And so there was kind of a, a little bit of pushback on that. And eventually we came to an agreement, but that was like, I was ready to go. You know, Daisy had to hold me back from that one. I'm kidding, kind of. Um, it and, was, yeah. There were a lot of times where we're like, yes, we understand the general philosophy, but this came from someone's experience and someone's right. life. And we're telling the story of one particular character. Right. So we versus really, Apple. yes, versus like a general and that, and that is how you make it relatable is to make it specific. Um, it, it actually ironically gets more universal as it gets more specific. Um, but yeah, we, we had to fight occasionally and say, yes, not all sober people, but this sober person. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I slept with a newcomer and they were like, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't say that. I wanted to, but I didn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was fun. But most of the time we agreed, honestly, 90% of the time we were in total agreement and that was great. And it was really cool actually to see that I wasn't, to to be honest, that I wasn't off the mark because that can get scary if you're like, well, maybe my experience is so different from others, but it's really, it's really not. So that's what you learn in AA too. Yeah. That's really interesting to hear. Um, Yeah. Ali and Sophia jumping, jumping back to the mother daughter relationship, you know, one of the really beautiful moments between your characters was when they end up going to, to scatter, you know, Sam's dad's ashes, um, you know, and again, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, where you've got the comedy of the fact that her mom doesn't tell her that's what they're going to do because she thinks she might not show up. And then it turns into this really beautiful touching moment between the two of them. Um, and I was interested in how the two of you worked together and really finding the different beats and nuances of that scene together. I mean, um, that day of shooting is probably my favorite day of the entire series. Um, me, Ali, Simone, and our amazing director, T- Trayvon Free, were out in the middle of nowhere. No cell service, you know, weird, hot, long day, but we just laughed and giggled and Ali fell in the river. She did. <laughs> she, did. she really fell in and it was like quicksand. We just, we were like, we're going to lose <laughs> Ali Sheedy. Oh my God. Uh, and it was just so, it was one of those really special days, honestly, for me, where it feels like, oh, this is the show. Um, and it sounds weird because it's so much, it's so late in the season to feel that way. But, but I find that especially with comedies and in series, like it can take a little while to sort of get into the groove and really figure out like where it feels right and where the character lives and doing that scene with Allie and spreading the ashes and feeling so emotional about what we were doing, but looking at her and, and laughing hysterically and feeling like there was so much unsaid between us. Um, Yeah. It felt like the show to me. And that's something that I think is really special uh, for an actor and, uh, I mean, to, to be honest, every scene with Allie always felt like the show to me. I feel like, uh, I've said this to Simone many times, but the way that she's written this mother-daughter relationship is so nuanced and so special to me. Um, and it's really a joy to play. And Simone had written that episode, actually. She wrote the that, that scene with the spreading of the ashes. And I just remember how ridiculous it was that, yes, she did this without telling me but also that there's no ceremony at all. And this is this huge hole in our lives that we don't talk about. And this man that we both miss so much and she's just like, okay, here we go. You know, it's, it's just a wonderful, very, very fun, messy thing to play. And I wish that I could say there was like this really intense rehearsal process that went into it or Ali and I had to talk for hours or whatever, but really the way that Ali and I work is we go to set We look at each other, we read the scene once or twice, and then we do it. And I follow her and she just takes me where it needs to go. I think she's Ali Sheedy. No, no, stop. Sure. From my point of view, I follow you. We're playing off each other. We have, there's a, there's a dynamic that just sort of does it for you. Do you know what I mean? Between the two of us. Also, the interesting thing about that scene, that scene is so complicated. And no, we didn't have a discussion about it. Um, But we're going to put the ashes in the lake, right? And yet we've never talked about him. So when she wants to say something, I'm certainly not going to be the one to start the conversation. She has to start it. But then she has to also make sure that she brings me into it. Like this thing about our firm, <laughs> don't just talk about yourself. 
it, so we haven't had the conversation yet. So it's almost like we're having the act of putting the ashes in way before you really should, which is exactly mm -hmm. the way this dynamic between the two of them actually works. Like going ahead with something that you should have already sort of figured out. Um, then when we started walking back to the car, you know, I, I don't like the AA thing. I don't like the amends thing. I don't like the drama of the whole thing. But she starts going on to be about he was the higher parent and you were the wicked witch. And at that point, even though this isn't in the writing, I felt like, okay, I don't really need to hear any more of this. Um, you're going to make an amends and it's all it's going to do is hurt me. So actually I'm going to talk about myself and be the adult here and just, you know, be the generous, wonderful Carol. I, I know right. that none of that is in the writing, but it is Simone. It was just so weird and awkward. And then the other thing is when we got to the car, um, I did not know at that point, that was episode nine, right? And we've been through the whole show. I don't know what's coming up in episode 10. I did not know if I was gonna have another moment with Sophia to just express any kind of love at all. So that moment at the car was really important to me to just tell her, you know, I love this version of Sam. I think it's the first time in the entire show that I really opened my heart up to her for like one second. Um, and it was just, it, it, it could have, I could have played against it, but it felt like I don't know what's left for us to have together. And it was just really important to just have that one moment. Um, so I don't know, maybe it was a little bit like, yeah, violence or anything, but I had to have no, it. No, so it was you great. Know what I, mean? it was, I loved it. it. By the way, it this is, is why we don't have to do rehearsal because this is how Allie comes to set. She's <laughs> like, she sits in her caster and she's like, I can't believe that you're gonna say this to me. <laughs> she's like, how dare you? You know, I hate this. I know, but then I can't wait to hear and how I'm Sophie right. is going to do it. Do you know what I mean? I how is she going to do it? I'm right. And, but, you know, it's like, what's, what's there to, what do we have to do? You know, what's, what work is there to do? I just have to listen to her and respond. Same. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think, like, writing for these two is such a joy. And um, we had talked about this moment from the beginning of this season in the writer's room. And how do we get them to this place? Um, and when we, when we finally got to that moment and we knew that these two kind of had to have this moment and be real with each other. And this is the first time all season, they've actually both let their guard down and they both communicated to each other in this way, but they're still each other and they're, they're, they're still themselves and they're still pathologically themselves. So <laughs> the fun thing about it was like, finding the game of the scene and it really is Samantha is sitting there trying to make her amends and trying to be legit and Carol for all the reasons that Ali just articulated is not going to let her do it and she's instead she's going to like cut her off and make it about her and you just see Samantha getting so frustrated and being like, no, I have to apologize. And I have to tell you, I saw you as the wicked witch and, and, and the way just putting all the chess pieces in and then seeing them play with it was so fun and gratifying. And it was kind of a thing that we had talked about as a room from the beginning of the season, like, how do we bring it to this point? So it, it, it was great to see in the cut. It, it was, and, and that kind of brings me back to you, Simone, in terms of, of the overall structure of the show and really figuring out with this story, what part of the journey, you know, it sounds like it was always very clear the part of the journey that you were going to come into episode one on, um, but ultimately there's a lot of different ways in which the series could have played. The whole series could have been the first month or two, but we really get to see this character arc over a year, you know, and that really wonderful thing where it's like, you don't become a completely different person overnight. Nobody does, but there's a real journey and a real evolution in a lot of ways. Um, and so how did you kind of think about at the beginning and conceptualizing this show, what are the important moments that we want to come back in narratively? What are the gaps between the episodes going to be where we can kind of move forward a little bit and have those little small nuanced evolutions in some of the characters and some of their relationship dynamics. So that by the time you get to episode nine, where you have a really beautiful moment like that, the audience has been carried on this whole journey just naturally leading up to that point. I, I think that, um, 
this is my opinion. You don't want to stay in new sobriety for, for too long because it's so painful to watch. <laughs> um, but after that, after one, two, you know, three, four, even, I feel like five is really where we started to have fun with Samantha, with the horniness. That's when that happened to me as well. Um, and, and then six and seven were really sort of like, I mean, I see it as the steps, to be honest with you, a little bit um, in my head. That's how I envisioned it at the beginning. Um, and six and seven are about defects of character and, and, and letting those go. And I feel like six and seven are exactly what that is for Samantha. In New, in New York, she realizes this isn't for me, I'm letting this go, which was really beautiful to watch. And I think Sophia did an amazing job at that. And then um, eight was obviously the flashback where we see you know, her and James and their drunken and their alcoholism, which I thought was an amazing, that was Jenny's idea from the very beginning. And I thought it was awesome. And then once we get to nine, you know, I think Sam is ready because of New York um, to finally, you know, with a little pushing from Olivia to make amends to her mother and to go there. And then I can't talk about the finale, but you'll see it. Um, but yeah, I, I would also. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I would no, say no, no, like no. the way that we originally pitched it out and conceived of it um, was those first three episodes, the entire season is like, to move past uh, your worst, your to become your best self, you have to move past your worst self, right? And you have to fully meet it. And so the first three episodes are kind of like awakening for the first time, like just being comfortable in your body, being comfortable in a job. Like, like she's kind of, we talked a lot about um, the fact that this character has been drinking since she was 15. So she's almost 15 going on 28. And she's missing all these years of her life and having to restart in this way that other people know how to go to a job sober. They know how to date sober. They know how to do all these things. And she's a baby butterfly kind of like coming out of the, the chrysalis. Um, and then when she starts to get her feet on the ground around the midpoint of this season, there's a little bit of big shotism and there's a little bit of like, um, I've got this, I know what this is, I've got all the steps, I can do this, but you still haven't really dealt with the pain. Mm -hmm. And eight, seven, eight, and nine are kind of like the coming back to earth and the actually having to process the pain in, in order to move forward. Yeah, no, that's really, really great to hear. And you can completely see that structure in, in watching the season. And it's been such a great season so far. Definitely excited to, to check out the finale. Um, and thank you so much to all of you for sharing all of these details in, in making such a beautifully unique show. Thank you so much. Mara. Thank you. It's such Your a fun Your questions discussion. were so thoughtful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they really thank were. You for such thoughtful, lovely questions. It was really nice talking with you.